Tonight I stand side by side with our law enforcement partners, our mayor, city leaders, to share the heartbreaking news that Jacksonville has suffered the loss of three precious lives at the hands of an active shooter. The shooter, according to the sheriff, was a racist filled with hate. Plainly put, this shooting was racially motivated and he hated black people. He wanted to kill that's the one and only time I'll use that word. I'm Anjanette Levy. Thanks for joining us here on Law and Crime. Three families are grieving in Jacksonville, Florida, after their loved ones were senselessly murdered over the weekend. The sheriff in Jacksonville says the shooter picked his victims simply because of the color of their skin. The incident in Jacksonville started at 1139 a.m. on Saturday. Sheriff Cook gave us information that he left Clay County, headed to Jacksonville. At 1, to, at 1 18 p.m., he texted his father and told his father to check his computer. At 1 53 p.m., the shooter's family members called the Clay County Sheriff's Office. By that time, he had already began shooting in Jacksonville. It's unclear at this point how the Clay County Sheriff had that information about Ryan Palmeter. Palmeter's father said in the 911 call that his son was prescribed an antidepressant but wasn't taking it. It was called escitalopram. All right. And does your son go anywhere that you know of? Is there, like, common place no. that he goes to? No, he doesn't go anywhere. Oh, he doesn't go anywhere? Yeah, he, uh, flunked out of Flagler College, moved home about a couple years ago, um, had a job for a while at Home Depot and lost that job and pretty much been living in his room. We okay. do know that he's getting, um, receiving uh, psychiatric help. He has been? Yes. Okay. And he's been on meds, too. And do you know if he's still taking it or if he's been stopping? It looks like he stopped 10 milligram tablets, but it doesn't look like he's been taking them. This was filled July 23rd and the bottle's full. But less than two hours later, Sheriff T.K. Waters says Ryan Palmeter went on a mission to murder black people. Outfitted with a tactical vest, armed with an AR-style rifle, and a handgun. Then the shooter killed three people before turning the gun on himself, taking his own life. Other than the three individuals killed and the shooter himself, there are no additional people who suffered gunshot wounds. We are not identifying the deceased victims at this time, but I can tell you, that there are two male victims and one female victim. All of, all of the deceased victims are black. Angela Michelle Carr, 52 years old. Anolt Joseph, or AJ uh, Laguerre Jr., 19 years old. And Gerald Deshaun Gallion, 29 years old. Sheriff Waters released portions of surveillance video that showed Paul Meter in action. Waters said the shooting started at 1.08 p.m. on Saturday after a campus police officer saw Paul Meter acting suspiciously. At 12.58 and 17 seconds, EWU security follows our suspect out of the parking lot. Between EWU security leaving the parking lot and shot spotter 911 call at Dollar General at 13 or at 1.08.04, EWU flags down JSO officer and says there's a suspicious person on campus, a white male, Heavy set, wearing a gray tank top, black shorts, bulletproof vest, and blue latex gloves, and a tan Kia. That was the description they, that they thought. They thought he was in a Kia. Shot Spotter is a technology that alerts law enforcement to the sound of gunfire. At 108, Sheriff Waters says Paul Meter started shooting. At 108 and 13 seconds, the suspect's on video in the parking lot in front of the store, shooting into a black Kia and murders the first victim, Ms. Angela Carr. The suspect enters the Dollar General store and engages the second victim. Um, I saw a young 19-year-old young victim, Anolt Laguerre. Sheriff Waters says terrified customers ran out of the store's back door. Paul Meter followed, firing one shot, only to go back inside where he killed the third victim, Gerald Gallion. The sheriff says Paul Meter chased Gallion's girlfriend and tried to shoot her, but missed. At 118, the suspect texts his father and says, Use a screwdriver to get into my room. The father enters the room and finds a last will and testament of the suspect along with a suicide note on his laptop. Moments later, officers heard a final gunshot. Paul Meter was later found dead in the store's office where he'd shot himself.
The murders took place over a span of just five minutes. Paul Meter has a history of mental health issues. The shooter was 21 years of age when he committed yesterday's atrocities. He lived with his parents in Orange Park in Clay County, Florida. To our knowledge, he had no criminal arrest history. And as I said yesterday, he did have a Baker Act petition from 2017. The Baker Act is formerly known as the Florida Mental Health Act of 1971. It allows someone to be institutionalized involuntarily for a mental health issue. That is allowed when someone is in danger of harming themselves or someone else. But Paul Meter was released after 72 hours. He was also involved in a domestic violence call in 2016, but no charges were filed. Waters says Paul Meter's writings show he hated black people and was a racist. In fact, he says he wrote things to the police and the FBI. The manifesto is, is, a, is quite frankly, uh, the diary of a madman. Um, he was, he was, I mean, he was just completely irrational. Um, but what is, irrational, what is irrational thoughts? He knew what he was doing. He had 100%, he was 100% lucid. He knew what he was doing. Sheriff Waters says Paul Meter legally bought a Glock 20 10 millimeter on April 6th of 2023. On June 22nd, he bought an AR-15. There's no, there was no flag that could have come up to stop him from purchasing those, purchasing those guns. As a matter of fact, it looks as if he purchased those guns completely legally and all the FFLs did what they were supposed to have done um, to make sure that there were no issues. Um, so therein lies a difficulty. When a person grabs a hold of a gun with, with hateful intentions, it's very difficult to stop that from happening. The community and the victim's families are grieving. A vigil was held over the weekend. Well, I'm heartbroken, obviously. Uh, this is a community that has uh, suffered again and again. Uh, so many times, this is where we end up. And uh, there were so many people out today, obviously grieving, upset. Um, it's it's just something that should not and must not continue to happen in our community. It's too often the same folks. And this type of, of hate, you know, this type of, you see the, the swastika is on the gun. We must do everything that we can. We must do everything that we can to dissuade this type of hate. I can tell you it angers me as a sheriff, as a member of this community, no family should ever have to deal with something like this. Um, anyone who enters into a store and does this to perfectly innocent people, one doing his job, a couple of customers, um, is baffling to me. It's very difficult for me to watch, and I've seen a lot over 32 years. The FBI has labeled this shooting a hate crime and has opened a civil rights investigation. Officials do not believe Ryan Palmeter was part of an organized group. We have requested the body camera footage and the dash cam video, if it exists, of this shooting. So far, our request has been denied because it's an open investigation. For Law and Crime, I'm Anjanette Levy.